Hello all, welcome back to BHP Tours. Bit of a different video this time round. Before I unveil my new car that I'm using for the channel, I wanted to walk you around a truly iconic car that I'm pretty familiar with, the Land Rover Defender. So this is actually where it started, Series 1 in 1948, but I'm not talking about this model, I'm talking about the second generation of the Land Rover Defender. It is always a risk when relaunching a classic, even more so when the first deliveries coincided with a global pandemic in early 2020. But from a design point of view, it's hit the nail on the head with the assignment in my opinion. So this is the Defender 90. I've been using this car to help keep the mileage off my Chevrolet Corvette whilst I'm obviously not doing the European road trips. So this is a Defender 90 HSE in Santorini Black. I would have liked the extended black pack which would have blacked out the lettering, the grille as such and the front and rear bumpers like you see below here on the Defender 110. That's available on the X-Dynamic and currently is £975 as an option. So engines, you've got four six and eight cylinder engines. This one is a three litre diesel and you also have a plug-in hybrid but that is only available on the 110 and you get a tiny reduction in the boot space. So wheel options, pretty important for Defender owners. You also have the option of being able to change the brake caliper colour as well on certain models. You'll see here you have the 20 inch alloy wheels in silver. You also have a similar option in gloss black and the same option which is standard on the X-Dynamic in satin grey but if you want something a bit more classic, you have an option of being able to go for 18 inch steel wheels, very similar to the original model. So towing options can be an essential for a Land Rover owner. We're by Thames Rowing Club, just on the Putney Bridge, beautiful viewing on a Sunday morning. You'll be happy to hear that the Land Rover Defender towing capacity for all models other than the plug-in hybrid is three and a half tonne, which will be more than enough to tow one of these canoes and boats. This model was actually a Series 2A, which was made from 10 years from 1961. And it's easy to see where the modern interpretation came from now, right? Pretty cold morning this. Doubt we had heated seats in his Land Rover, so like him, it's time to get. Back in the warm, couldn't do this outside. So the car that I was driving doesn't have a tow bar, so I wanted to show you the two options you have of being able to tow. This one has a detachable tow bar, which I'm gonna attempt to try and do now. You get a nice bag, well, I say nice, you wouldn't really do anything with it. I've got Velcro so you can attach it. Nice pair of oven gloves so you don't get your hands dirty. And then you get given a couple of keys, so I'm going to give it a go. Okay, cool. You filming? You're still recording. Okay, cool. All right. So, yeah, I will. So, this is your key. Nice and. Oh, <laughs> okay, well there, that's a fair bit of work, but I'm going to go back in. Even my sound bar things come out. Anyway, let's not worry about that for now. Let's show you how to do it without any of the manual labour. So £450 give you the privilege of having an electronically deployable tow bar. Press a button in the boot, hear the beeping till it give you a warning that it's coming out, and voila, tow bar is fitted. And same button again to put it back in. Just like the Land Rover family, being divided between the luxury of the Range Rover, the practicality of the Discovery, and the iconic Defender, this modern classic is split between three different body styles and which one you buy is largely going to come down to how much space you need and which one you like the look of. So the 90 starts off the range. It's three door only and at four and a half meters long it's the shortest Defender you can buy. It comes with either five or six seats. I'm driving one at the moment and I love its compactness and smaller proportions. Access to the rear seats. and smaller boot space might mean why you want one of the bigger models. For those seeking more flexibility in your 90, Land Rover do have you sorted for the 24 model year. 
by making it easier to get in and out to the back. Manually adjustable, no more electric, no more waiting. And you can fold the seats down entirely flat by folding down the headrest and lifting out the base of the seat. This is the view from the back with the removable storage tray, housing a side step. This flat low space floor gives you the flexibility that was missing from the early 90 models. And then to get out, you have a handle, grab handle at the back. And if you're moderately flexible, with the help of a side step, you do it like so. But obviously you have to do that every single time. It was never a problem for me in my 23 model, but it might be for you. So it's worth noting when buying. So the 110 gives you five doors and sits at five meters long. You also get a far bigger load space and the exciting option of a plug-in hybrid. The difference in size between the two cars is a wheelbase. That's the distance between the front wheel and the rear wheel. For those that didn't know, that's where the nameplate 90 and 110 came from. The original three door had a wheelbase of just over 90 inches and the five door just over 110. So the plug-in hybrid, launched in 2021, it uses Land Rover's two litre four cylinder petrol engine developing 300 horsepower and a battery developing 104 horsepower from an electric motor to combine to make the P400E. The maximum range on the P400E is unveiled with 27 miles on a full charge. Preconditioning the battery is the only way you'll get close to that. You can do that either in the cabin or on your Land Rover remote app. Obviously using the luxuries in the car, like heated steering wheel, heated seats, air conditioning, all play a part in reducing the range. I've used the past tense here when talking about the plug-in hybrids figures. That's cause for the 23 and a half model year, there was an important update, not only for company car drivers, but for private users as well. Intelligent all wheel drive. Which brings you driveline disconnect. This disconnects the front wheels to the engine when possible, leaving the car powered solely by the rear wheels, thus improving fuel economy and lowering emissions. So in the plug-in hybrid, you have three driving modes, all changeable via this EV button just here to the left of the gear shift. Hybrid is the default setting when you start the car. This is where your Defender determines whether to use the petrol engine, the battery, or a combination of both. Electric vehicle mode, the reason why you bought the plug-in hybrid, prioritizes use of the electric motor, ideal for those low mileage school pickups in the city. Save mode will lock in the battery state for later use. This is best used for motorway runs where it primarily uses a petrol engine. This mode will also charge a battery while driving. It still needs plugging in, but Land Rover claim it will go from zero to 80% at motorway speed in 90 minutes. I touch on engines briefly at the start of the video, but after going over the two litre petrol plug-in hybrid, six cylinder diesel engines are taken care of in the form of the D250 and the D300. The D300 especially is used throughout the rest of the Land Rover range for their larger product and is great for long distance journeys. So definitely the most economical for those high mileage users. You get over 450 miles on a full tank. I'm not sure if you can pick up the difference in sound, but this is a P400. That's a three litre petrol with, you guessed it, 400 horsepower. I think it's a sweet spot in the range for performance and pricing. It's really smooth, quiet, and offers a really strong power delivery for a sub six second nor to 60. It's also on launch, the biggest petrol engine available. In the 110, you have the option of five, six, or seven seats. Although the seven seats on the 110 are actually badged as a five plus two seating option because they're a bit smaller. Should be all right. If you do want something a bit more practical to house more people, Land Rover do have you covered. In the 130, another five door variant with a 34 centimeter overhang over the rear wheels to enable the standard fitment of eight seats. So the three in the back are pretty comfortable, even for somebody of my size. You get USB ports at the back, you get additional vents, the Alpine lights in the roof on the 110 and the 90 replaced 
by a glass roof as well. You even get a three pin seat belt that's in the roof. If I get this right, it's a make. pin like this. Whilst it'll be obvious to most that you have the ability to fold these seats down, you do have the option when building the car to delete the seats entirely. But Land Rover do have an option that might be better suited to those who need a Defender with a bigger boot. I'll run through that a bit later. Which leads me on nicely to colours. But before I go over colours, Land Rover have quite a unique naming strategy for the exterior paint choices they offer customers. They're all geographical locations. It's got you thinking, right? Where's Dad's Range Rover from? And they are a bit more creative than Essex White or Birmingham Blue. Great places, mind. So the black car that I was driving earlier, that's named Santorini Black, after the volcanic ash on the Greek island in the Mediterranean. But that then takes me to another classic color, Tasman Blue, a classic, reminiscent of one of the blues on the early Defender. I think it was called Marine Blue off memory. But there, looks great. Very classic, white wheels. They actually do something called a county pack where you can actually have a white rear door um, or even a blue rear door um, on the Defender that isn't the X-Dynamic. So looks really cool. I'm sure it's great for keeping clean and named after the Tasmanian blue open skies, I'm told. So yeah, a bit of history behind it as well. Land Rover can't offer a Defender that's not in green, right? This is Pangaea, named after the supercontinent from two to 300 million years ago. That's a late Triassic period for the historians. But works well, I think it's a flexible color. I like green cars personally. It works well if you go for black packs and it also works well if you wanna go for the white wheels, white roof sort of look as well. So yeah, and I'm sure it's great for keeping clean. Thumbs up for me. From one supercontinent to the other. Gondwana actually led to Pangaea after this huge landmass was formed from South America, India, Africa, Australia, and Antarctica all collided and merged together. The coloration of the rock mostly surrounding the continent inspires the color you see here, Gondwana stone. Not too common a color this, but it is different and enhanced in my opinion by the inclusion of the extended black pack. Hakuba silver. This neutral color was inspired by the beautiful village in the Japanese Alps, really popular on the previous shape defender. Your blacks and greys tend to be more popular nowadays, but it is traditional, and for those wanting a more premium silver, this might appeal. Silicon silver. Named after the famous valley in North California, it's one of two premium paint colors available on the Defender, which costs twice as much as a standard metallic paint. It's quite unique, hence why I wanted to show you a different angle. I think it's really subtle and works really well in different lights. I especially like it with the diamond turned alloys. The other premium metallic paint is Carpathian Grey, definitely my favourite. It's actually named after the dark coloured rock on the Carpathian Mountains. It's a beautifully dark, rich colour that really showcases the shape of the Defender really well. And it's a lot easier to maintain and keep clean than black, for example. This mountain range arcs across Central Europe from as far as Czech Republic all the way to Romania. I've also had my heart set on driving to Romanian mountains for as long as I can remember after seeing that Top Gear episode all those years back. Here are both of the premium metallic paints, side by side in natural light. Would you choose any of these two colours to your Defender? So this is Iger Grey, a colour I should love. I had a Corvette in pretty much the same colour. You might wonder why it looks a bit strange though. This is the outbound, so instead of the back windows, it's a utility panel again. So great for, uh, great for storage, it's a 130 and only on the 130 as well. So again, a huge amount of boot space. No seats in the back, like the rest of the 130, you get the rubber mat as well. I'm sure that will work well for a few people needing a bit more space. So these are the 20 inch alloys, coupled with the off-road tires, Goodyear Wranglers. They're just over 250 pounds, and if you do any of the heavy duty stuff, you're gonna want these. For those who want your Defender to look a bit different, Land Rover have introduced for the first time to the range, the satin protection film. The film is applied at the factory by train fitters and protects the paintwork against stone chips, scratches, and even the sun's harmful UV rays. More importantly than that though, it looks great. It's super easy to clean and comes with a Land Rover warranty. So if you've got any issues, you can take it to your local dealer. The wrap is also available on Pangaea Green, Gonwana Stone, and Iger Grey. And for 4,000 pounds to wrap the whole car, it's very good value for money in my book. So I wanted to show you outside in daylight, 
the satin versus the gloss. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. It's the Fuji White, a colour we don't see too often on the Defender. This non-metallic paint is named after the snow on the world-famous Japanese volcano, Mount Fuji. Which reminds me, this is a hard top. What's that? Well, it's an N1 compliant commercial vehicle, fitted with an external utility panel. Great for signage for your business. You can also get the hard top as a five door 110, despite its lack of rear seats and windows. A commercial vehicle may also be able to grant your business some tax relief, so it's worth checking with your accountant before you inquire. As you can hear, it's diesel only in the hard top, but like other vans, you're given a full height partition to separate row one occupants and the load space. As you can imagine, with the hardtop getting no seats beyond the first row, you get a huge amount of storage, especially in the 5 door 110 variant like this. You also get a fully flat load space floor with storage options underneath. Land Rover have also upgraded the interior lighting to improve brightness by up to five times compared to the passenger variant for improved functionality. So the standard Defender hardtop is the only model that you don't get leather seats. Fabric this time around. You even get these deep-sided rubber mats as standard, just under £200 in the non-commercial variant. Vintage tan, one of my favourites. As I mentioned before on the channel, I think it looks absolutely beautiful on certain Ferraris, but can work really well on the Defender, especially if you go for a dark exterior colour. But it looks really nice. I especially like the ebony contrast on the outside of the seat. I'm sure it's great for keeping it clean. It only comes as standard on the top of the range Windsor leather, which then reminds me, strange centre console, AKA the six seat option. The jump seat, let's give it a go. So 815 pounds as an option. If you're anything over six foot like me, it's a bit of a squeeze, but I'm sure children will absolutely love it. And it really does add character to the car. I haven't seen it on anything this side of a van. And here you have one of the two lighter colour choices on the inside. This particular colourway is called Acorn Luna. So Acorn for the lightness of the interior, or for the inside of the seat rather, and then the Luna, which is usually uh, called Robustec, which is Land Rover's sort of fabric, premium fabric material, but on the higher spec HSE and X, and also the option of the V8, this bit can be leather as well. But uh, just adds a bit of extra brightness to the cabin, Obviously the headlining will do that as well, but yeah, just adds a bit and again, should stay relatively clean with things like dye transfer from denim or obviously other, other muck and dirt, but I like it. So you have two trim options in terms of the actual fascia and the dashboard that you see. You can actually change the trim here to any form of a couple of different forms of wood, but here this is fitted with the 180 pound option of the dark cross beam. That extends all the way across the dash as well and the steering wheel. Otherwise, you get a lighter grey or you can also actually pay extra. Again, I think it's £180 to make all of this white as well. Those are the three different trim options. I'm praying that the camera picks up this colour well, but this interior is khaki. Almost matches a strap on my Apple Watch. It's pretty unique and it's exclusive to the Defender, so not offered anywhere else throughout the Land Rover range. I like it, it's different enough to black, and I'm sure it's pretty hard wearing as well. Roofing options, <laughs> I feel like a jack in the box. Let's start with the left field choice. You have the fabric folding roof. Reminds me of being on a safari. Well, urban safari anyway. The best thing about this roof though, is that when it's open, it's really open. You have two stages. First stage will take you up to here, if I'm right. Second stage opens fully. Look at that. And then when it's closed, it is totally closed. Great for privacy, makes it really nice, dark, cozy. So you can enjoy your lovely interior. The most popular roofing option though is this, the full size sliding panoramic roof, covered by an electric sun blind. It offers a lot of extra light to an already airy cabin, this time in a glass housing. The glass is also tinted for UV protection and privacy. And for those seeking an open air experience, the sunroof also has a tilt function and opens fully. You might spot that these metallic finishes behind me look a bit different than the ones I've shown you early on in the video. That's thanks to the XS Edition, which is available in four colors, Santorini Black, Hakuba Silver, 
the premium metallic silicon silver and also Gondwana stone. And it's the only model in the entire Defender range to get body colored wheel arch surrounds, the lower door seals and the lower bumper cladding in place of the gloss black on the X-Dynamic and all the anthracite grained on the Defender. And if I walk over to the Gondwana stone, it will just show you how much difference a spec makes even if you choose the same color. Just have a look. I'm hoping this is the best place for me to stand that shows you both cars. On my right, we have the X-Dynamic, which has the extended black pack as an option, lettering, grill bar, all of the lower bumper is Narvik black in gloss, extends to the wheel arch trim as well, and also the lower door seals. And on my left, we have the XS edition, again, Serra silver lettering, grill bar, and the lower part of the center bumper, front and back. And then on the lower part of the bumper towards the wheel arch, wheel arch surround and the lower door cladding, you'll spot that that is all painted the same color, so Gondwana stone. And it just shows you, aside from the wheels and the color, that there are many different ways that you can style your Defender to make it look more unique. Let me show you the Defender with the anthracite grained and you might be able to get a bit of a picture. This might work well if off-roading is central to what your use is going to be of the Defender and want something a bit less flash perhaps, or something that doesn't look as Gondwana stone as that. So Defender, non-X dynamic. Again, anthracite grained here, wheel arch trim, door seals, and you compare it with the XS edition. Just shows both got 20 inch wheels. Big, big difference, I think. So let me know in the comments which one you prefer. X dynamic, non X dynamic, or the XS edition with its color coding. So I did mention earlier on the XS edition that you get some features as standard, which are optional throughout the rest of the range, from the illuminated tread plates, comfort and convenience pack, that's the wireless device charger and the fridge, and also the standard fitment of the sliding panoramic roof. X Dynamic trim removes all of the Serra silver. It's replaced by silicon silver on the bonnet script, the grill bar, and the front and rear skid pan. Privacy glass is also a standard fitment on the X Dynamic versus the Defender's tinted glass. 20 inch satin grey wheels over the standard silver. A pair of satin black rear exposed recovery eyes rather than the hidden on the non-dynamic. I'll explain why these ones are orange a bit later on in the video. The Defender X tops the range above the X Dynamic HSE. You get these beautiful rear dark and tail lamps on the X, reminiscent of the ones you might find on an Aston Martin or a Porsche. Really nice touch. Head-up display is an especially nice addition to the X, giving you real-time graphics while you drive, such as Land Rover Nav turn-by-turn -turn directions and road traffic sign recognition. A black contrast bonnet, Land Rover call this Lot Orange for the brake calipers, which also match the rear recovery eyes. On the inside of your Defender X, you get some cool options as standard. Heated rear seats, that's the outer two, not the middle. Toasty. Bright finished pedals, and even a three pin domestic plug socket in the boot. Let's head into the cabin and check out the interior, where you're greeted by this huge 11.4 inch touchscreen. It dominates the dashboard, iPad style. It was introduced to the range in 2022, two years after launch, to replace a 10 inch screen. And whilst it looks a lot different, functionality is exactly the same. So USB ports, always a key thing for me when traveling, especially with all the equipment. You get five USB ports on the Defender. Come here, let me show you them. So you get two at the front, USB-C and USB-A. You also get another one on the parcel shelf. USB-C currently used to be USB-A. And two further ports at the back behind the center console for the rear passengers. The range between USB-A's and USB-C's, depending on what year and what spec. On launch, as standard on all but the base model, Landro offers something called a click and go integrated base unit, which was a USB A port behind each of the front seats. Landro have unfortunately removed it from the range two years after launch due to global part shortages. Land Rover have worked with British audio pioneers Meridian for a number of years now, and this continues with the upgrade over the standard Land Rover sound system with the 10 speaker 400 watt system. Crucially, over the standard Land Rover sound system, you benefit from a subwoofer mounted underneath the driver's seat. You also get a mid-range speaker in each door card to further enhance the experience. If you're anything like me and music is very important to you, the Meridian surround sound system has you covered. You benefit from 14 speakers and 700 watts. It even has its own Meridian channel, help dedicated to get the best out of it. 
A dashboard tweeter, a mid-range speaker also help lift the quality, particularly at high volume. The main benefit of this system though, is the two overhead surround sound system speakers, giving you the best audio quality possible in the Defender. Coil spring suspension or air suspension? Or air suspension that goes up and down, it's available as part of a pack and it gives you three modes, access height, which is four centimeters under standard ride height, or off-road mode, which can rise to 15 centimeters over standard height. So headlights, you'll be delighted to hear that every Land Rover Defender benefits from LED lights and they're great. You even get a daytime running light and they're bright and designed to last for the whole lifetime of the car. You can upgrade though, let me show you. So premium LED headlights are the next level up from the standard model. The LED signature really does add character to the front end. Matrix technology then dims the LEDs completely upon approach and adapt to the shape of the beam so you don't have to dazzle oncoming traffic. You can even change the driving side abroad via the dashboard so you don't have to put those horrible stickers on your headlights. LED fog lights are a low cost option at the entry point to Defender ownership at about £200 and even if you don't use them often it's worth the extra outlay. A plastic trim just sits in its place and they illuminate when going around corners for that extra bit of visibility. Clear sight rear view mirror. This gives you an unobstructed view to the back through an additional camera mounted in the roof antenna. I say additional, it's separate to the rear view camera mounted just above the number plate, which has its own washer jet. Great for getting rid of the mud and dirt from off road you're going to be doing, right? Two years after launch, Landra answered all of my prayers and unveiled this the V8. You've got visual clues such as a quad tailpipes, really cool. You've got V8 badges on the door seals and you've also got the interior tread plates as well which are illuminated. You even get the darkened tail lamps on the X model. Let's go and look at the engine shall we? It's a 5 litre supercharged V8 and yes this is where I bore you with the numbers. 525 brake horsepower and you get 0 to 60 in under 5 seconds if you go for the 3 door 90 and a bit over if you go for the 110 or the 130 and then you get 149 miles an hour top end. Tasty. <laughs> There's only one style of wheel on the V8 and you have a choice between gloss black like this, satin grey, both 22 inch. You can also downgrade for 20 inch wheels. I say downgrade because no one wants to do that. You also had a standard Xenon blue brake calipers, but only at the front on launch. Don't know why, but a year later, it's taken away. It's only black moving forward. So on the top of the range Defender, you get two color options, most likely hinting at the most desirable and also the colors best suited to the car. Santorini black, as you see here, and also the premium metallic Carpathian gray. Another decision needs to be made on whether you go for the black exterior pack. If you remember, that's the black lettering and the front and rear bumper or you can go for Dark Atlas to match the satin grey alloys, which leads me very nicely to the Carpathian edition. Well, what is it? Well, it uses the same engine as the standard V8, but offers you £4,000 worth of satin protection film in obviously the premium Carpathian grey paint. You get a few other nice touches, gloss black bonnet, a black contrast rear tail door and even a black contrasting roof. So V8 interior options, you get three choices, two of which are Windsor leather, the highest quality offered on a Defender. Firstly, you have ebony, which is all black, and then you have vintage tan, this time with no contrast, really nice. Third choice though, a bit special, let's go and have a look. Okay, it probably isn't special to most, but I love it, it's called Dynamica and it's a suede Alcantara style seat with Robustec on the outside, really feels special. I had something similar on my Amira and it really, really is nice. You can also get an Alcantara or suede steering wheel as well to complement it. Again, only available on the V8. So due to engineering, there's no roof carrying ability on the V8. So standardized, electronically deployable tow bar. At just over five and a half thousand pounds, let me know if you think it's worth the outlay over the standard V8. All right, let's hear how it sounds, shall we?
I've spoken a bit about the Defender, so what about the competition? Well, Land Rover see the cars having three main rivals, the Mercedes G-Class, the Jeep Wrangler, and also more globally, the Toyota Land Cruiser. You probably now even say the Ineos Grenadier. How similar does that look to the last generation Defender? But especially now, as Land Rover offer the eight seats in the Defender 130 and the option of seven in the 110, you now look internally at the new Discovery. With seven full seats as standard, a plush interior, bathed in leather and metal. You even get armrests like you do on the big Range Rover. Despite the similarities between the two cars, the Defender actually has a raised ride height over the Discovery to help enhance the off-road look. Which reminds me, both models are built in the same place. Any guesses where? Well, although Land Rover are proudly British and owned by the Indian Tatar Group, they're not built here in the UK or in Asia. They're actually built in a place called Nitra, which is in Slovakia, Eastern Europe. But that really is the beauty of the Defender. It's simple, but it evokes emotion. <laughs> no pun intended. There are some really nice personal touches though, such as these really cool puddle lamps with the Defender graphic being fitted as standard on every model, and the Defender script being dotted in numerous places around the car. On most other makes, you tend to find the badge at the back of the car, perhaps on the tailgate or the bumper. Any guesses on how many times I saw the Defender script on one particular car? Three or four, perhaps? No, 26. You even get a sleek metal Defender plaque on the steering wheel, just in case you weren't sure on what you were driving. Let me know in the comments if you can locate each one, or if you think there's another car you can think of with more. Even these exposed metal rivets holding on each of the door cards just adds that rugged feel with your Defender. The exterior paint being visible from the inside just makes it that bit more unique. I've got Santorini black here with the ebony, but I've also got a white, Tasman blue, and also the Iga grey, just for example. You have loads of accessories you can buy to really help customize your Defender to what you want. Key item for me though, wheel arch protection. Really adds to the off-roading look and will help protect your wheel arches when driving off-road, especially through bushes and trees, etc. You also have this, the raised air intake. No, it's not a snorkel, you can't drive through rivers with it, but it will help when driving through sandy conditions though. The mud flaps are great for the retro look on the car, but they also reduce spray on a motorway and help protect your paint against debris and dirt. You can get smaller ones if you want them to be more subtle too. This bright rear scuff plate looks well, and protects the paint from scratches when putting things in and out of the boot. You can also get a side-mounted gear carrier. It comes in in silver or black, and it's great for outdoor items. Think wetsuits if you've been in the water, wellies if you've been on a long walk, or even pet product. It's lockable too. Not a huge amount of storage, but handy to have nevertheless. Looks good too. Expedition roof rack. Does add to the Explorer feel of the car. You can attach a roof box, skis, snowboards, even a canoe. But the most popular accessory that Land Rover sell are the ones that help you get up there and in and out of the car, the side steps. You can get these, the fixed ones, for just over a thousand pounds in either black or silver, or you can spend quite a bit more to get the deployables. These electronic steps come in and out when you close the door and deploy horizontally, differently than any other model in the Land Rover range to minimize impact on vehicle clearance. They're almost three times the price of the fixed side steps, over 3,000 pounds, but how cool are they? You can turn them off if you're doing any heavy duty off-roading and you can even leave them out if you want to gain access to the roof without the deployable side ladder. Well, there we have it my guide or walk around the Land Rover Defender. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. As this video is a bit different to my standard sports car road trip vibe, imagine a lot of you watching are new to the channel, especially if you're looking at the Defender. So welcome. Do check out my older videos for my time with my Lotus Amira. I had an epic road trip from England all the way around Spain. and even did a couple of track days, including Spa for those into Formula One. My most recent adventure though, was in my right-hand drive Chevrolet Corvette. Around the south of France, Italy, Switzerland, and even a bit of Western Austria. And yes, I had a few altercations with police along the way. Is this routine or? Please do subscribe to BHP Tours if you haven't already. It helps so much with the growth of my channel. 
and do click that bell icon as well if you want to get notified every time I upload because I've got so much to bring you, including the replacement of my Chevrolet Corvette. But before we get there, Land Rover Badger Defender is the world's most capable and durable SUV. Let's take it off-road and see what we think. Enjoy your Easter. Do check out my Lotus Amira farewell video and me taking my Chevrolet Corvette up the world-famous Stelvio Pass. Oh yeah, make sure you subscribe.